if you're happy in Jesus, let's hear a hearty amen. Okay, okay, you're with me. You're with me. The book of John chapter 15, this is our last night of this. I try to do this all in one shot, and I was unable to do it. Thank you for those who are just joining us now uh, via computer, television, or whatever, handheld. We're thankful that you've chosen us tonight. God bless you, and we trust that if you're ever in our area that you'll come and visit us. All the people say, amen. amen. Now, you probably didn't hear that, but they all shouted amen. But it's always good to have folks visit us, and, and uh, uh, it's, it's, always, it's always a blessing to open up the Word of God. My message started out three weeks ago, uh, Christian's threefold relationship, and we're working out of John chapter 15. So go ahead and turn to John chapter 15. Now, we looked at our first relationship. It was our relationship with Christ, and we used verses 1 through 11. My friend, if you're here tonight and you don't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus, I encourage you to get saved. And if you're here and you're saved, I encourage you to have a wonderful relationship with the Lord Jesus. We're not going to do anything in our life unless we do. And then uh, our, our last week, we looked at our relationship to one another. And my friends, we are the local church. If you have done what the Bible told you to do, amen? And we are part of the body of Christ, and, and not all of us take on the same roles, but I'm telling you, we are to work for the Lord is coming. We are to labor together and not against each other, and, and, and we need to move together. If you're, if you're a, a, a member here at Bible Baptist Church and you're, and you're sort of dragging a little bit, man, we need a dragon slayer, amen? We need to get on the, on the road to doing great things for God. And there's no reason with the freedoms that we have today, there is no reason that we cannot do great things for the Lord Jesus Christ. That's our desire. Tonight, I'd like to finish off this study with our relationship to the world. You say, are we supposed to have a relationship with the world? Well, not, uh, not the way that some Christians are having a relationship with the world, but we, we do need to uh, understand our relationship between God and the world, okay? And I'm going to be talking to you about this tonight. Over in the book of John chapter 15, I want to start reading in verse 18. We're standing to show respect to the Word of God. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you are of the world, the world loveth his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world... Therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which no other man did. Listen, he says, if I would have done the works that no other man did, they had, had, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. I tell you what, if you want to look at that, not right now, but the book of Psalms 35, 19, and the book of Psalms 69, 4. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. John chapter 14, verse 13. He says, And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. Now, Lord, help us to keep our hearts open and to your restraint instruction. Lord, fight the devil and, and those things that would so easily beset us. Help us to love you because you first loved us. Help us to serve you because you saved us from this awful world. God, help us to love those that are outside of Jesus Christ to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And so now we see our relationship to the world. You know, we need to be separated from the world. 
I tell you, it's a sad state of affairs that when people come in contact with those out of the world, that the people don't know them from anybody else. I spoke on this this morning. My friend, we ought to live a life that is in such a way that people know that we're different. And I don't mean strange. Well, we might seem strange to them. But their life, your life, ought to be in such a way that they know that you know God. You say, well, you can't live a life like that. Well, I'm telling you tonight, you can't and you ought to be living a life like that. Man, the Bible tells us in the book of Matthew, and we're going to read it towards the end, that they ought to see your light shine so bright that they give glory to the Father in heaven. There is a man that came out of our church as a preacher home with the Lord, and he got on the elevator at, at a hospital, and two ladies came on to the elevator, and and of course he was in his suit and everything and she says are you a doctor the lady that was with her said no he's not a doctor no he's a preacher of the word and he says well how did you know she says you can sense God in your life my friends people walk through the door they ought to know that God is here people talk to you they ought to know God is here people people come in in, in just a short manner of time, they ought to see that we are different. Not that we're stuck up, not that we're strange, but we are children of life, children of God, that we carry in our possession in this blessed book that we have right here. We carry the message of life to all who will just accept it. My friends, if we don't do it, the world's not going to do it. If we don't do it, the world's going to make sure that they don't hear it. My friends, we've got a job to do. And it's not a job that's a, a terrible task. It's a job of love and, and compassion. And it moves us to greater heights. And it lets us talk to more people. And we'll see people saved. We'll see them follow the Lord's spiritual baptism, scriptural baptism, believer's baptism. And then we'll teach them to see that they can grow in grace tomorrow night. We're going to be having our class again. It says, what do you believe? Back there on the desk that was left to me from our pastor before. He says, saddest thing that we find in the Christian faith today out of independent Baptist churches is that most of them don't even know what they believe. My friends, there's no reason why we shouldn't know what we believe. Because we need to take it to the next generation. One of these days we're going to be gone. One of these days we're going to be out of here. If not through the rapture, definitely through death. And what are we leaving the next generation? That's why we have these classes on Monday night at 7 o'clock, which I didn't announce in my announcements, but I did announce it. Now, we're doing this so you can establish in your heart. I brought Brother David and Sister Terry back to my office. I said... Do you, you want to see my notebooks on what we believe? And I brought out two big old notebooks. They said, ooh, that's a lot. I said, no, that's not a lot. Boy, I tell you what, that's just what we need, though. People need to know what they believe so they can fight the world and follow Jesus. And so we need a separation. In verse 19, he says, if, uh, uh, he says, if you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you're not of the world, but have cho I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. My friends, we are not part of this world. We're separate from the world. We don't need to look like them, smell like them, act like them, dress like them, and do like them. No, sir. We need to look like Jesus, talk like Jesus, smell like Jesus. What's this Jesus smell? I'm sure it's pretty. Think like Jesus, be like Jesus. Why? Because we're of God. Because God has, has told us before the foundations of the earth, Jesus Christ was crucified, that we that would just be willing to come to him, that we could have life eternal. And that life eternal is only through Jesus Christ, as we learned this morning again and again. And so Christ has chosen us out of this world because he loved us. Now, I'm not Calvinistic in any way, shape, or form. You say, well, you're three-point Calvinist. Just because they maybe have one point, two point, or three points right don't mean they're right. 
The devil will do just a little bit to make say something right to get you suckered in and get you hooked, and then he'll take you out. Amen? Boy, I tell you what, we're, we're children of God. I'm a for whosoever will her. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, the Bible tells us. The Bible tells us he died for the whole world. That all men could come to him if they'll only do it. The Bible tells us that we're not of this world. We're, we're, we're a part of this world. But he chose them. Well, let's, let's look in the book of Deuteronomy. He said, well, they're talking to the Israelis. I know that. But I want you to understand something. As I spoke this morning, were the Israelis children of God? Come on. Do they belong to God? Let me ask you something. Tonight, those of you who are saved, let's see your hands. Do you belong to God tonight? Are you a child of the living God? Okay, there's something that we can take out of you. Say, well, that's the Old Testament. Yeah, my Jesus used the Old Testament to talk to people in the New Testament age. If you want to get testament deed. Amen. He said in the book of, of uh, 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 Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6, he says, For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God, the Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all the people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you nor uh, 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 choose you because you were more than any other people for ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you and because he would keep the oath which you have sworn unto your fathers hath the Lord brought you out of, with his mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of the bondman from the hand of Pharaoh and king of Egypt. I'm telling you, God's done the same thing to us. He hasn't chosen us because we're the most. He hasn't chosen us because we're the mightiest. He's chosen us because he loved us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have what kind of life? Everlasting life, my brothers and sisters in Christ. This is what God has done for us. Shouldn't that excite us to the point where we're ready to charge hell with the squirt gun? Man, I tell you, we know that we're not part of this world. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, he says, Come ye out of the world. Verse 17, Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. God doesn't want us stinky. God doesn't want us unclean, unrighteous, unholy. He says, you be holy for I am holy. He says, you be righteous. You follow in my steps. You follow the Holy Spirit as he leads you. He's going to lead you to greatness. He says, come out from, uh, from uh, the world. You, you teenagers that maybe you're thinking about chasing the things of the world. Listen to me now. Don't destroy your life. Don't do that to yourself. Chase the things of God. You young marriage and, and you get so busy in the world and, and, and you start edging Christ out of your heart. Don't you edge Christ out of your heart. He belongs there. He purchased it with his blood. You give him the room that he's, he desires and that he demands and that he deserves. You give him that. Say, well, I have friends that are going to come in and see me. You tell your friends, bring your church clothes because we're going to church. Well, they don't do church. Well, you tell them we'll see you after church. Amen? Tell them. Don't let the world control your life. Let God control your life. Don't give examples. Say, preacher, well, I just don't feel very good today. You go to work when you don't feel good. You go to school when you don't feel good. You go to the ball games when you don't feel good. Why should we, why should we not go to the house of the Lord? I tell you, I've come here where I, I, I tell you, I, I just about run, run all the way down. And I'm not trying to be gross or anything, but I've gone from, from throwing up to up here preaching, then I make you throw up. I got you all upset and you're throwing up. But I'm telling you, we can, we can sit around and use every, every ex, excuse under the, under the sky. And all it is is an excuse to get out of doing what we need to be doing for God. And that's not right. You know my definition of an excuse. What is an excuse? 
skin of a reason stuffed with a lie. Promote you say, well, there are some good excuses. Usually an excuse is used because we don't want to do something we know we need to do. The Bible tells us in the book of 1 Peter chapter 2, are you there yet? I probably haven't told you. Can't you read my mind yet? 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. He says, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Say, why did he use that peculiar? Because we're peculiar to those outside of the faith. They don't get it. Say, man, why do you worship God? Are you crazy? Why don't you do this? Why is church so important to you? Why are people so important to you? This is just crazy. It's crazy when these things aren't important to you. The Bible says this, that ye should show forth the praise of him. Why do we do it? We're showing forth the praise of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Boy, I tell you what, he's called us out of the, the drudgery of the world. He's called us out of the muck and the mire of the world. He's put us up on a good, solid foundation. He's washed us. He's washed us. Sometimes we're so dirty, he did more than wash us. He washed us. Amen. He washed us. And he got us cleaned up and he brought us into his wonderful light. Why in the world do we want to go back to the muck and mire? I don't know. His path leads you away from that. The devil's path leads you back into the pig pens of the world. Man, we're not pigs, we're lambs. I'm going to say it one more time. If it's not good, I'm going to bring out my sign. I say we're not pigs, we're lambs. Okay. We're not, we're not that. We're the children of God. My friends, we need to be. The book of Ephesians chapter 5. Are you there yet? Ephesians chapter 5. In verse 11, the Bible tells us this. He says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. My friends, we're not, we're not going to sit there and have anything to do with darkness in our lives. We shouldn't. He says, reprove them. Don't give them excuses. Don't give, that's, people say, well, you know, I have a friend or I have a loved one, and, and they don't go to a church like ours, but they're going to church, and that's all that counts. What? Don't ever think that. It does count where you go. <coughs> Go to some place that they'll teach you that you need baptism to get you saved. That's a lie. They go to a place where they'll tell you you need to work for your salvation. That's a lie. It does matter. You go to a place and they're supposed to tell you how to be saved and, and scripturally baptized and they tell you to go out. It's okay to go out and live like the devil and do what you want to do because God understands. That's a lie. God understands this. You're out of His will and He wants you back in. Amen. Folks, we have got to get real with God. We can't excuse ourselves away. Well, I'm just going to do what I want to do for a while and then when I get ready, I'll get right. No, 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 no. That's not true. That's not true. There's an old fella, and if, it, if the story's correct, his name is Buddy Holly. And Buddy Holly was called to preach when he was a young feller. And he, he sang that song, Peggy Sue, I love you with a heart that's really true, old Peggy. Who in the world was Peggy Sue? Well, the story goes, and this is the testimony that I understand that came from his parents. He called his mom and dad. He says, okay, I've had my time in the world. Now I'm going to come back and do what God's called me to do. You know what happened to that rascal? plane crash. God killed him. He said, well, that's okay. He's in heaven. Would you want to go into the, the, the kingdom of the Lord in heaven in a condition well, God, I went against you my, my young adult life. I was going to get right with you, but, but Lord, I just died. At least I'm in heaven. Man, I would go shamefaced to stand before the God who gave us everything, gave us life eternal, gave us a holy calling and say, here, God, I did this for you. And say, let's check it with the fire. What's the fire going to do? It's going to burn that stubble. Oh, no, no, no. That's not the way we live our lives. 
Oh, we live our lives separated to, uh, from the world. He said, I, I didn't choose you because you are mightier than others. He said, I chose you because I love you. Why in the world would he love us? I don't know. I don't get it. There's not one of us that deserves God's love. I don't care who you are. You say, well, preacher, I'm awful sweet. Yeah. Yeah, I'm such a good person. Man, I'm a good husband. Let me talk to your wife. Oh, I'm just a wonderful wife. Let me talk to your husband. Amen. Oh, I'm a good kid. Let me talk to your parents. I'm sure they can share. There's nothing that we've done to deserve the love of God. As a matter of fact, everything we do, we deserve God's judgment. But in love, God reached down to our miserable souls and He says, I love you. How much do you love me? I gave my only begotten Son. I gave that most priceless and perfect gift so you could have life eternal. Now that is love. That is the love of God. Sometimes as Christians, I think we forget the love of God. Now let's talk about the love of the world. They'll take everything you have and abandon you. They will give you things to destroy your life. They will do everything they can to destroy your marriage, your family, and everything else you have. That's what the world does. You say, how do you know? Because Satan is the father of the world. He hates anything that God loves. He tries to destroy everything that God has created. He's doing this, and you are, uh, as, as children of God, you fall back into that rut. And what is the definition of a rut? It's a grave with both ends cut out of it. Man, I tell you, God's put us on the high ground. Amen? We're not in a rut. We're in the high ground for the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and that's where God expects us to dwell. Well, opposition. Preacher, there might be some opposition. No, you can count on it. Come on. Say, when I got saved, I just thought everybody would love me. Yeah, God loves you. Your brothers and sisters in Christ love you. The world's not going to love you. No. Nah. No, the world's not going to love you. You know who's going to love you out of the world? Those people that you go and win for the Lord Jesus Christ. They're going to love you. You know why they're going to love you? Because now they've become part of the family of God. And then soon we trust that they become part of the bride of Christ. Amen. And so we, we see the opposition. In this John chapter 15. Let's go back there again. <coughs> John chapter 15. He says this in verse, <coughs> verse 19. If you were of the world, the world will love its own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Yep. God didn't do anything to the world but love the world. Why, he ministered on this earth. He did nothing but good. He did things other people had never done. The Bible just declares that. I've done things no man could do. And yet they hated him. Those who were supposed to be worshiping in leaders of God, they hated him the most. Why? Because they hated the Father. They were so into themselves. Man, I tell you, they put little bells on the end of their robe so everybody could hear them coming. Look out, folks. I'm a coming. ding a ling ding a ling ding -a I think that's what they were, a bunch of ding -a -lings. Amen? They'd stand on the corner, and they'd pray these prayers, and as people went by, they'd probably be saying real quietly, hypocrite, hypocrite, hypocrite. They had no any inkling of what, who God was. Because when Jesus came on the scene, they should have fell down and worshipped him. They should have said, this is the son of the living God, God the son. But the world hated him. The world wanted him dead. 
tell you, it breaks my heart that he died, but it makes me rejoice that he died. Amen. Because he died, I can live tonight. Because he died, you can have life tonight. There's an opposition. Just as soon as we become the sons of God, we become strangers and foreigners of this world. We do. We're, we're just, we're just for, foreigners to them. We, they, don't, they don't get us. Why don't they get us? Because they don't get God. That's why they don't get us. In the book of John, chapter 3. 1 John, chapter 3. 1 John, chapter 3. The Bible tells us, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. What a blessing to be called a child of the living God. But the world knew him not, they're not going to know us. They're not going to understand us. You say, well, therefore I will not give them any information about God. The church was told to what? All power is given unto me in heaven and earth, Jesus said. What next? Go ye therefore and do what? Teach all nations. After you teach them, they're going to get saved. What are you going to do? Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And then what are you going to do? Just leave them on the doorstep? No, sir, re-bob. Huh? Teach them all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. What happens at the end of the world? We go be with him. You see, church, we've got to go. That's a command. Go, go, go. Acts chapter 1. He tells us to go. We go to our Jerusalem, then our Judea, and then our Samaria, and then to the uttermost parts of the earth. Why? Because God so loved the world. <coughs> he gave us His Son to die. <coughs> we must have we must expect opposition because our master had plenty of opposition. Man, he had it, he had it, he had it. After all, are we better than he? But we have this promise in the book of Matthew. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 5. I'm almost finished. I know you guys are thrilled about that one. Matthew chapter 5. Over the book of Matthew chapter 5. I want to look in... Verse 11. He said, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manners of evils against you falsely for my sake. I like this. He says, he says they're going to lie about you. Now, now, this is for the folks who are living right. Now, we don't need to be a Christian that someone says bad things about us and they're telling the truth. Now, Paul handled that. He says, man, i got to keep myself in, in, uh, in line lest I proclaim the word of God and, and they reject me. He says, I, I become an outcast because what I'm staying out of my mouth isn't what I'm saying in my life. No, don't you amen me anymore until I give you the sign. It's so weak on this side. Can you guys not read? Okay. Good. Night, nurse. Well, I tell you, folks. He tells us. He says, man, it's going to happen. Let's read verse 12. Rejoice and be excited, uh, exceeding glad, for it is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were sent before. You mean I'm supposed to be happy when I get persecuted? It's better than being sad. It's better than being discouraged. Happy are ye. Man, what do trials and temptations do? Man, they take, that, take our old life and it's as the gold that goes to the fire. It burns out all that nasty stuff. All that ooh and that goo. And we come out on the other side. We come out purtier. We come out holier. We come out more righteous. We come out the children of God. And I tell you what, there's going to be reward in heaven for you if you do this. But we don't have to wait till heaven. God rewards us on this earth for faithfulness, doesn't he? 
Amen, Brother Terry. Amen. Witnessing. Verse 27 of John chapter 15. This is about it, folks. I'm not going to say it's my last verse because I do, and then I throw in some more verses. But in the book of John, in the book of John, chapter 15, verse 27, And ye also bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. My friends, when Christ lives within our hearts, we cannot help but testify and witness for Him. We can't help it. It's like, it's like, it's like an old, old volcano inside. It's going to erupt and it's, it's going to flow out. It's got to. If it's inside, it's got to come out. And, and, and we got to, we got to tell We'll witness it. We'll, we'll, we'll be uh, uh, in truth. In truth, we'll witness of his death. In truth, we'll witness of his resurrection. In truth, we'll, we'll testify the ascension by faith. Death because we have been crucified with him in Galatians chapter 2. We are crucified with him. Amen? We crucified the world. We crucified the things that will hold us back and so easily beset us. We crucify them. We give our lives to the Lord. For some people, sports means more to them than than their God that saved them. With some folks, uh, 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 their house, their easy chair, their travels mean more to them than their God that that loves more than uh, loved them more than anything. We talk about their resurrection in Romans chapter 6, verse 5. We were resurrected. You know, we, we use this for baptism and everything. But my folks, uh, let me tell you something. We're buried with Him. We're buried with Him. We're raised up. What? For what reason? To testify of God's love. We say goodbye to the things of the world and yes to the things of God. You say, man, you don't want me to have anything. You don't want me to have a nice car. That's a lie. God gives us nice cars. He gave me a nice pickup. I love my pickup. My pickup's a good pickup. You don't want me to have a nice home? No, God gives nice homes. Well, you don't want me to have a good education? That's not true. God gives good education. I tell you, those things that He gives us aren't more important than the one who gave it to us. You've got to remember that. I'm closing down now. You ready? Here we go. Because we've been raised from spiritual death. My friends, we were dead in trespasses and in sin. Like my brother says, we're walking zombies, walking dead people. Christ put that life inside of us. And it wasn't just a touch of life. No. No, 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 no. When God does it, He goes all the way. He brings us completely to life. Life abundant. Amen. Oh, it's so important, folks, that we understand this. We know that one day that we'll see Him in heaven oh what a joy to know that Jesus is sitting at the Father's right hand and one day our Heavenly Father is going to look over to him and say son go get your people all the struggles the trials the victories I don't want to think that if you're a Christian all you have is trials how many has victories How many has a bushel full of victories? Amen. Amen. But that call is going to come one of these days. We see that the Lord, He's going to come and the saints with Him. Those who've already passed, according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. They're going to go back to the grave. They're going to receive a new body. I'll have a new body, praise the Lord. I'll have a new life, eternal. Amen. Amen. Then we that remain shall be caught up together 
Say, what's going to happen to our bodies? They're going to be changed in a moment, the twinkling of an eye. And I don't know if we're going to be singing this song or not, but I'll sing it tonight. There's going to be a meeting in the air in the sweet, sweet by and by. I'm doing this for my wife. She says, you're going to get twangy. I'm going to meet you, greet you over there in that land beyond the sky. She says, he'll always go twangy when he sings that song. Such singing you will hear, never heard by mortal lips. Twill be glorious, I declare. And God's own Son will be the leading one. What? In the meeting in the air. Amen. Let's all stand up.